this video we're gonna be talking about how to travel with a cat across Thailand because we just done that we came all the way from Laos because we've been living there for two years and we decided to come to Thailand yep so we crossed through the land border and um, we've done our quarantine and we have finally arrived in Krabi in the south of Thailand and it is so beautiful here yes super excited to film loads of videos here yep. for you guys but today we're gonna be talking about how we traveled with our cat because we do have a cat and <laughs> Yeah, it's been a stressful three days. Yes. That's all I can say. We thought that it was very easy to travel with a cat. But before we go to this, we'd just like to quickly talk about our cat. So basically, a year and a half ago, our friends found a tiny little kitten covered in engine oil somewhere in Vientiane city center. And obviously, they couldn't walk past. So they sent us a message and asked us if we were interested in rescuing a kitten because they've already rescued one and they just couldn't have two cats in one go. Yeah. So we decided to adopt him. So when we saw the kitten, it really, it nearly broke our hearts. The cat was so malnourished. It was literally about to die. I'd say two more days, if that, and he probably would have been gone. We felt like, you know, it's a big responsibility, but it's not something that we could just say no to and just knowing that the cat was not gonna yeah. survive. And also in Laos, there isn't rescue centers you can just take a cat to when you find it. There isn't places like this. So it was, yeah, it was a big decision for us, but we didn't see any other option really. Yes, there is a very big problem right now in Southeast Asia with abandoned pets. Uh, mm. A lot of people come here for a short stay, maybe a few months or so. They ad adopt a little kitten and then when they have to go somewhere across the border or just go home, they simply ditch the cats in temples. And we actually made a whole video of an amazing lady in Vientiane who looks after those cats. She looks after 80 cats. There's a link just above us. You can check it out the video. So we decided to simply take the cat on board, even though I'm a dog person, but I just felt it was the right thing to do, right? Yeah. So originally we were going to fly out of Laos and go back to Europe, but we completely changed our minds and came to Thailand instead because the land border opened, uh, the friendship bridge from Vientiane to Nong Khai. Um, so we had to do all the paperwork for the cat. So what we needed to do was the microchip and the rabies vaccine. Uh, you have to do them at the same time on the same day, just a little tip. Also, we needed to do a blood test uh, one month after the rabies vaccine to make sure that it didn't have rabies and then you have to take all this paperwork with you when you're flying or crossing the border. And then you also needed um, a permit to exit Laos with the animal. And then you also need um, a, like a pet health certificate. Usually you have like a pet passport, but in countries like this, it's just like a health certificate to go to Europe or wherever you want to go but it might depend on what country you're going to what you need so make sure you check all that before you apply for the papers once we got the paperwork we were ready to go so we went through land border which is Vientiane to Nong Kai Friendship Bridge yeah. and as soon as we got to customs guess what no one checked the cat documents it was very frustrating. You know, so it took us three months of a lot of time and energy, frustration, and, and yeah, no one even yeah. checked the documents, but you should totally do this because obviously that's the law and that's how you're supposed to legally travel with a cat. So we spent our quarantine in Nong Kai, which is at the northeast of Thailand, 1,400 kilometers away from Krabi. And we have been looking to many different options into how to travel with the cat, what would be easier, better, and more affordable. So obviously we first looked at flights and unfortunately we couldn't get in touch with any flight companies. Yeah. So we decided to simply go directly to Udon Thani. So we went to Udon Thani airport and it's smaller airlines that cannot take the cats on board. I'm pretty sure in Thailand as a country there is many options but at this specific situation in Udon Thani there was zero flights and we had no option but take a train or a bus. I had previously experienced traveling with a train across Thailand. It's very, very painful. It is a very long journey. It's extremely noisy. And our cat has actually a bit of a PTSD sort of thing. Our cat has sort of like a traumatizing past, obviously. And he, he gets really scared when it's really noisy. So we decided to simply take the bus. Yeah, also there's no aircon really on trains. So it would get super hot, especially during the day. And being in a bag, for the cat, that would not be very nice. So yeah, we decided to get the bus. We'd already got the bus from Nong Kai to Udon Thani. They didn't say anything about the cat, so we just got on. Um, they didn't charge us anything extra. So we were like, okay, the bus is already an option. So let's try and get a bus from Udon Thani to Bangkok, which is what? 
10 hours ten or something hours. like that. So we took a night bus. It was a very long journey, really. It was extremely long. We were worrying about cat's toilet, but we Googled it and apparently a cat can hold uh, its poo uh, for 24 to eight, 48 hours, which is quite a long time, that. surprisingly, right? So after a very, very long and frustrating journey, we've got to Bangkok. So we arrived in Bangkok at around five in the morning, literally on two nights no sleep at this point, and we were hoping, we had timed it so we could get a bus from Bangkok to Krabi through, throughout the day to leave at like 7 a.m. from Bangkok to get to Krabi. So we went straight to the ticket office and the lady said that there's no more morning buses running because of COVID and the pandemic. They cut down the bus times and there was only one bus at quarter to six in the evening. So we didn't want to wait at the bus station for another 12 hours just to get another 12 hour bus to Krabi, which was not realistic. We checked in into a day hotel. Apparently there's a day hotel thing as well. Yeah. And after that, we had a little bit of free fresh, a shower, and then we went back to the bus station to be told that we're not allowed to travel with the cat anymore. Even though we have purchased our tickets, we have everything ready, but the lady said, sorry, you can't do that. You have to go and cancel your tickets. So we went back to the uh, ticket office to get the refund, but the lady at the ticket office actually then said that she could get us on the bus for an extra 500 baht with the cat because the driver of the bus said he would be happy to take us. So we're not sure what the policy is with traveling on buses with pets in Thailand, but our cat is traveling in this bag. So, Literally. yeah, this is the bag we purchased. As you can see, it's like a, it has like a window, it even has a fan. As you probably know, it would get really hot, so we got like a special yeah. fan. You can unzip him right here. It literally so, looks like a backpack. Yeah, like, so the lady saw the bag and she was like, oh, that's totally fine. Uh, then obviously she yeah. got us on the bus, very nice, at the front seat, loads of leg room. And this is pretty much it. And then we were driving for 12 hours, which was very, very actually nice. The bus had a lot of room and aircon, like I said. It was different to the bus from Nong Kai to Bangkok because that was literally like a time travel. I felt like I was back in the 60s. And this was a completely different experience. It was really, really nice. It cost us around 630 baht each. Yeah. And then plus the 500 baht for the cat. And that was from Bangkok all the way to Krabi. So we're not sure if this pet policy just applies to when you're in Bangkok and wanted to travel out because when we were getting buses from Nong Kai, it was super easy. Nobody asked us for anything extra for the cat or anything yeah. like that. So like even the driver came up to the cat and was like, yeah. oh, look at this cute cat. They were all like, oh, how nice is that? So they're like, oh, that's cool. You know, yeah. so we thought it's all easy. So we thought maybe it's because Bangkok is a bit stricter because they were also being very strict on, on us getting on the bus in general because of COVID. They wanted all this paperwork of COVID tests. So yeah, uh, if you're traveling with a pet, we think that you might only have issues when you're in like the big bus stations in Bangkok. That seems to be what the problem was with us. But I mean, we still got on the bus and got there anyway. So it maybe it just depends on the lady on that day or the man who's selling the ticket. We really don't know, so... The most important thing is that where there's a will, there's always a way and we managed to get to Krabi. So now, right now, we are in Krabi. Obviously, we had to find a place that does accept pets and it took us about 20 to 30 phone calls to find <laughs> one uh, because uh, a lot of places are actually closed down now and most yeah. of them already have pets. So you cannot have a cat, you know, with, with another cat. Like, it's just not how cats work, you know. They get usually very violent to each other. Territorial. Territorial and stuff, and stuff yeah. like that. So for, luckily we found this place uh, called SJ Guest House, which is a really cool place, very affordable. It even has a swimming pool and it's uh, cat friendly. Although uh, the cats obviously should not be wandering around too far. And if you are planning to go anywhere, make sure that the place you are staying is sort of cat friendly and there is no like stray dogs or stray cats and stuff like that because you don't want your pet to get rabies or, or simply just get traumatized by other animals. So as you can see, we didn't have too many issues with getting on the public buses across Thailand with our cat but if you do there is actually a Facebook group that um, I found which is um, specifically for traveling with pets and it's just groups of people saying I'm traveling here in a minivan if there's a couple seats spare if you want to join you could do that kind of thing because private minivans will transport your pets with you so if you have big dogs that's probably a better option because public buses they're probably going to only accept a pet if it's in a bag like that and it stays in the back, so keep that in mind if you want to travel across Thailand on the buses. 
Anyways guys, we really hope that this video helped you out at least a tiny bit because traveling with a pet is a mission. But yeah, we are in Aonang, right next to Krabi right now. We're going to be making loads of videos about all of the Krabi province, all of the islands around us. We're so excited to explore. We haven't seen a beach in two years, so we're really excited yeah. to be here. And we want to make a many different videos about many different topics. Leave us a comment if you like us to make a certain topic video. And if you did enjoy this video as always, don't forget to hit that like button because it helps us out. Hit subscribe to see more of our content and we'll see you next time.